All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Sunday afternoon business. The numbers are going up, and the haters are still hating. Can I be more happier? Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up a little... I just lit up something called Green Dragon. Look it up. No lies. Look it up. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Let's get right into business, shall we? Coming out the pages of Costa Nostra News and the world-famous Ed Scarpo, let's get right into it. The Bonanno boss who tried to take over Montreal and was slain on Thanksgiving. In 2006, the imprisoned Bonanno boss Vinci Vinnie Gorgeous Bastiano named named Salvatore Sal the iron worker Montana, the acting boss, tapping him at the age of 36 to lead the Bonanno crime family. Montana had been born in Montreal. His parents moved to Sicily, where he spent his childhood in early teen years. Then the Montana family relocated to New York. He got that nickname because of a small metalworking company he founded called Matrix Steel Company. Montana was tasked with returning the Bonanno family to power and profitability. But Montana had troubles from the beginning and had to start carrying a pistol. Some Bonanno wise guys weren't happy about his rise. The iron worker relocated his wife and three daughters from the Bronx to Elmont on western Long Island near Queens, New York, and set about a troubled reign that lasted a few years only. When he suddenly faced deportation in 2009, due to an earlier contempt conviction, Montana decisively lost the reins of the Bonanos. He could move to Canada or Sicily. Montana chose to hurl himself into the increasingly chaotic atmosphere of Canada's underworld, where two mafias, the Sicilian Cosa Nostra and the Calabrian Indragata, had established separate historical roots. The two groups were engaged in a messy shooting war when Montana showed up in the land of his birth in 2009. The war erupted after Montreal Cosa Nostra boss Vito Rizzuto was arrested in 2004 for his role in the 1981 Brooklyn murders of Bonanno Capos, Alphonse, Sonny Red and Delicato, Phil, Phil Lucky Giacconi, and Dominic Big Trin Trinchera. What happened was all those Bonanno wise guys, starting with Frank Coppa, started flipping until the boss, Joseph Messino, also flipped. A disgracia! Something that was unheard of. Messino knew intimate details about the three Coppa murders because he himself helped order them. Since the 1930s, the Montreal Costa Nostra entity has been part of the New York Bonanno family like mafia groups in Toronto, had once been part of Stefano Magadino's Buffalo-based crime family. Rizzuto was arrested along with the Bonanno crime family street hierarchy, including Anthony Tony Green Urso and Joseph Camarano. Vito fought extradition while his organization was under attack. He lost a legal battle and was driven to the airport on August 17, 2006 and put on a plane to the U.S., Vito warned of trouble in Canada, saying his acting boss was not capable of leading the family in his absence. Vito was sentenced to 10 years. He would only have to serve a five-and-a-half-year bid. It was enough time for Rizzuto rivals to do him major damage. While Vito Rizzuto settled into the routine at federal prison in Colorado, all hell seemed to break loose in Montreal, with the battle lines drawn between Costa Nostra members loyal to Rizzuto and those who were not and were backed by the Andragata. Among the elite, high-ranking members of the Rizzuto Cosa Nostra's organization who were slain in war-related fighting were Vito's son and namesake Nick Jr., who was killed in a brazen daytime ambush in December of 2009, and almost a year later, in November 2010, Rizzuto's father, Nicolo Rizzuto, was killed by a single bullet fired into his head from a sniper's rifle. Vito had succeeded his father as boss of the Montreal crime family or the Rizzuto crime family, which had once been the Montreal crew of the New York-based Bonanno family. Montana planned to replace Rizzuto with backing from the Andragata in Ontario. If the iron worker couldn't be Bonanno boss, then he'd take over the Montreal mafia and be the big shot there. He had much going on against him, however. He didn't speak French. He was arrogant, even for a wise guy as well as ineffective and bumbling. 
And he was unlucky. Canadian police probing war-related murders in Montreal managed to monitor Montana the entire time he appeared to be making moves to take control of the mafia in Montreal. The iron worker entered into an alliance with this man, Reynald Desjardins, the former right-hand man of Rizzuto, who was leading a group also allied with Indragata clans in Ontario. Desjardins had been described as the most influential non-Italian in Montreal mafia in recent times. Desjardins and Montana plotted to move against the rudderless Rizzuto organization. But the alliance between Montana and Desjardins was in danger of collapsing not long after it started. A dispute had erupted between the factions and an attempted hit was made when someone fired shots at Desjardins and his bodyguard in September of 2011. Desjardins survived, however, and it didn't take long for him and his cohorts to figure out that Sal the Iron Worker was very likely behind the attempt. Quote, he thought he was a lot smarter than he was, one mobster involved in the fighting once said of Montana. Montana tried to convince Desjardins otherwise and that Desjardins could trust him. Mickey Mouse, a.k.a. Montana, grew clearly nervous as Canadian law enforcement learned via surveillance. Montana met with Desjardins associate at a donut shop and described Desjardins as the only ally he could count on in Canada. The iron worker made impassioned arguments about how he had nothing to gain from Desjardins' death. Montana seemed to be willing to do almost anything to convince Desjardins he was a lawyer partner, even if it meant putting himself in the dangerous position of traveling to the middle of nowhere by himself to meet with Desjardins' associate, which he did. The iron worker was attending a morning meeting at the Canadian home of Jack Simpson, a Desjardins confidant in a working class computer neighborhood on an island on the river about 30 miles north of Montreal. A Simpson neighbor reported hearing possibly two loud cracks, gunshots, fired in quick succession, followed by the sounds of shattering glass. The iron worker had likely been shot inside Simpson's home and had crashed through a plate glass window to escape. The critically wounded iron worker was then seen by witnesses running toward the nearby Assumption River, where he dove into the icy waters and swam to the other side. The police were called in at 10.08 a.m. that morning by a witness who reportedly hearing gunfire. Investigators arrived at the scene and found Montana still nicely dressed in a suit he'd worn to that snake bit meeting floating in the river. They pulled him onto the snow beside the river, his blood coloring the snow beneath his body. The Bonanno family's one-time acting boss was pronounced dead at the hospital. The police of the Canadian province of Quebec took over the investigation into the murder. Arrested in 2011, Desjardins watched from a prison cell as Vito returned to Montreal, defying the speculation of many law enforcement observers in a vendetta kind of mood. He rallied the troops and systematically returned fire. Unbeknownst to many outside his inner circle, Vito was racing against a personal clock to cross names off the list he'd written. Bodies turned up as far away as Sicily and Mexico as Rizzuto avenged the murders of his father and son and allies. Then, just as he was seemingly winning the Montreal Mafia War, Vito Rizzuto shocked friends and foe alike by dying during Christmas week 2013. Unlikely enough, natural causes had claimed him. It was later learned that while ordering all those hits after his return to Montreal, Rizzuto was undergoing chemotherapy for aggressive lung cancer. Vito Rizzuto had died of pneumonia at the age of 67 on December 23, 2013, in a Montreal hospital where he had been rushed while having severe breathing difficulties. In 2016, Desjardins was sentenced to a 14-year prison term for his role in killing the iron worker. So first of all, we have to always salute Ed Scarpo from Culture Notion News. The link will be in the description box. Another great story, a blast from the past that ties directly into the Thanksgiving holiday. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you already know the routine. Like, comment, and share. Subscribe if this is the first time you're seeing our video. And then go back to see the plethora of videos that we have on this site. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you're smoking on. And haters keep hating. There's nothing I could tell you. You make my day. And we will talk soon.
Salute.